I'm here at True London. We just finished a track with Miranda Ash from World Blue, um, all about the democratic workplace, which was a fairly new one for most people in the room. We had a few blank faces uh, when we asked them what it what did it mean. Can you just give me um, a quick synopsis of what a democratic workplace is, please? Miranda? Yeah, absolutely. A democratic workplace is an organisation that op operates from a premise of freedom and possibility rather than fear and control. So we're moving from the age, the industrial age of command and control to, to an age of innovation and a democratic workplace is designed to, to foster that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also a workplace that is operated from a design of principles such as accountability, transparency, choice and reflection and evaluation and a mindset of uh, freedom rather than fear and control mm -hmm. so yeah that's what typifies them and I think um, we touched on a couple of points in our roundup of the mm. session um, what had people taken away from the initial not knowing anything about the democratic workplace and a lot of people mentioned empowerment in the workforce um, that it requires a certain brave culture can you just give a give us a roundup of the companies you've worked with and what makes them unique and why they've chosen to focus on yeah. that democratic? So we we work with um, we have member companies and and organisations in over eighty countries around the world now that we work with uh, roughly a quarter of a million employees um, and their employees who when you talk about brave. Um, feel like they are empowered to have a voice in the organisation, to have a stake that is more than just getting a salary check at the end of every month, that it's they have a voice in um, every aspect of the organisation, whether it's their own um, direct workspace or the you know how to innovate, or um, it could be even having uh, a voice in the office furniture. It's, it's everything from the little basic stuff that you think of up to some of the big decisions. Mm -hmm. And they're brave enough to stick their head above the parapet and feel empowered enough to have a voice. Mm -hmm. um, and that then, out of that falls, you know, it, things like higher levels of innovation, mm -hmm. um, higher levels of, um, or lower levels of turnover. And in some cases, in, all, in countries where your healthcare is linked to your, your work through insurance, there are lower healthcare costs because there are lower levels of stress. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And could, just lastly, can anybody do this? Does it have to be driven top down, bottom up? How? What, what advice would you say to a company who's perhaps just looking to set off on that democratic mm -hmm. path? It, a change can start in a number of places. Um, it can start from the bottom up, but actually real sustainable change, as far as we have seen, um, has to be started and modelled in the leadership first and foremost. So um, we do do a lot of work with leaders around um, you know, making sure that they are ready for change, they're resilient to go through this journey, and that they're able to model the democratic behaviours that they want to engender in their workforce. Because your workforce are going to be looking to you as the leaders all the time um, to guide the ship safely through these waters. And so, you know, that's one of the biggest uh, pieces of work that has to be done. Okay. Thanks very much. Not at all. Thank you.